All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Vonder, and welcome to another exciting video from our legal education series. All right, so we are talking in this video about strict liability, liability without fault. That means you do not have to show fault when you want to show that somebody's liable for your damages. Okay, so let's talk about that. Normally in the world of torts, we're talking intentional torts, you know, assault and battery, false imprisonment, intentional infliction of emotional distress, or we're talking negligence, like um, dro accidentally dropping a, a bag of sand on somebody's head while you're, while you're working over a head. So there's intentional torts, there's negligent torts, but there's also what we call strict liability. This is liability without fault. You do not have to show somebody in acted intentionally. You do not have to show they acted negligently. Usually that's a burden of proof that you have to show as a plaintiff. But with strict liability, it's liability without fault. And that means if somebody committed the f offense, um, committed the act, we should say, then they can be held liable for the injuries caused. Okay, causation is always a, another question. So let's take a quick look. These are our four major categories. This is not an exclusive list. There may be some other things based on your state. This is not legal information. This is general legal uh, information only, not legal advice. All right, so first we have strict products liability. And now what's that? This is when you go to the go to the store and you, uh, let's say you buy a can of tuna fish, okay? I just had some tuna for lunch. So say you buy a can of tuna fish, you open it, poof, and it explodes in your face and the lid cuts your eye and this and that, causing injury. Well, what do you do? Do you... Do you have to show somebody intended to hurt you? That somebody wanted Attorney Steve to hit him, you know, smack him in the eye? No, you don't have to do that because we have what's called strict products liability. Now, in in cases of strict products liability, usually the store itself, the let's call it the retailer, can be held liable. The distributor can be held liable. The manufacturer can be held liable. It's what we call all in the chain. Everybody in the chain. Uh, of the of the supply chain can be held liable and this is designed to shift fault to the other parties and so the other parties can work it out and figure who did it wrong was it the manufacturer and you have all these indemnification clauses all set up so question of who pays that will ultimately be figured out but in general uh, if you see this on your bar exam for example all all companies in the chain in the in the in the chain of supply can be held liable so you would name all those in a lawsuit and then figure it out from there we also have next category abnormally dangerous activities or sometimes what's called inherently dangerous activities. Now, you know what these are. These are things like working with explosive demolition. Say you're you're taking down a building. You know, crop dusting, um, things like that. But you know, this is where you have something where you really can't control the risk, even with the exercise of reasonable care. It's things that are so inherently dangerous that if you're doing them and you happen to, if you happen to um, catch somebody in the crosshairs, let's say, working with toxic chemicals or um, working with nuclear, nuclear plants and things like that. These things are so inherently dangerous. You, you can exercise due care, but because of that, certain things are going to come under the heading of abnormally dangerous activities. The, the uh, person who was had it within their control can be held liable without having to prove fault, without having to prove they intended to injure you or that they were negligent, okay? Next one, wild animals. I forget, I think the case was a uh, rye keeper or something, or a rice and or something like that, but it was one who keeps an abnormally uh, a wild animal and it's a wild animals inherently dangerous. They will be liable for injuries caused by their dangerous propensity. So if you have a if you have a tiger and your tiger you're keeping a tiger now a tiger is a wild animal. Typically you can't train a a, a tiger. I mean, uh, what do you have the Siegfried and Royd? I think uh, one of them I think was killed by uh, one of their tigers. So the, these things are wild animals, you know. And what uh, what what qualifies as a wild animal? You have to check that out. But you know things that generally are not pets. Okay, like rattlesnakes. Most people don't have a pet rattlesnake okay but if they get out if they escape if they commit uh, an, an injury caused by their dangerous propensities uh, could be a dog uh, certain types of dogs that bite you know uh, can tear a leg off that kind of thing 
can be strict liability without having to prove the owner was trying to injure you. In fact, I'm sure the owner wasn't trying to injure you. And maybe there was or there wasn't negligence. Maybe, um, you know, wild animals are pretty good at wanting to be out in the wild and finding a way to get into the wild. So anyone who keeps an, an, uh, an abnormally dangerous wild animal is liable for the, propens in, for the injuries uh, caused by their dangerous propensities, okay? Uh, trespass is another thing that could trespass and uh, destroy your house, those kinds of things. Finally, I have regulatory offenses. These are things like food and drug laws, self, uh, safety laws, um, liquor laws, selling liquor to minors, um, an area that I'm involved in heavily, copyright infringement. These things, you know, we, if you commit copyright infringement, Yes, your, your mental state, as we say, was it in innocent, was it willful, was it reckless disregard? Yeah, that matters according to, the to what the damages will be, but it's not a, a, a defense that I didn't have a mental, a mental state. So um, those are some of the ma major things, uh, your traffic laws. I, geez, I didn't know there was a speed limit of 55 here. Well, did you see the sign? Well, yeah, but I, but I don't think so. I mean, I was blinded, you know. They're called regulatory offenses. There can be liability without having to prove fault by the, by the regulatory body, okay? So that's a general overview. When you hear somebody talking about strict liability offenses or strict liability in torts, this is kind of what they're talking about here. Again, check out the rules in your state. If you need help, you can find my number right there. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot answer all calls. We do get a lot of calls. Uh, so I do have to apologize for that in advance. But there it is, Attorney Steve Vondren, Legal Education Series. I hope this has been helpful. If you like it, thumbs up. Maybe uh, subscribe. Have a nice day. We'll talk again.